up, we have a very exciting guest. I'm thrilled to invite international humani humanitarian media host and author Zainab Salvi, the founder, yes, yeah, they know why she's, they're clapping. Um, she's the founder for Women for Women International, and she has spent decades helping women in war-torn regions rebuild their lives. She is an absolutely inspiring human, and we are so blessed to have her with us today. Welcome to the stage. Here, actually. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, everyone. So I want to start by saying I believe in making the impossible possible. For way too long, women have been cornered into certain roles and characters. We are wives and mothers and daughters. We are to accept getting paid less. And when we get abused, we are to stay silent so we do not shame anyone. History has not only been his story, his story has been written, uh, writing our roles for way too long, in my opinion. And so we need, it's time to reclaim who we are. You know, the, the world we live in is a product of our imagination. So I say we might as well reclaim our imagination. We are indeed the mother today. We are indeed the mothers and the wives and the daughters indeed today. We are also the beautiful and the ugly one. We are the kind-hearted and the cold-hearted. We are the big and the small, the generous and the stingy. We are the open and the closed one. We are indeed the mothers today. We're all of it. We are the confident one, the insecure one, the jealous one. We are the sexual and the asexual, the masculine and the feminine. We are the life givers and the life takers. We are birth and we are death. We are indeed the mothers today. We are love and we are anger. And don't mess with our anger. We are the giver and the receivers. We are the, from the east and the west. We are all the black and the brown and the white one. We are the big and the small ones and we come in all different sizes and shapes. We are the shy one and the outspoken one, the sad one, and we are the happy one. We have been all. We have seen it all. We have been birthed and given birth and we have died over and over again, and we have lived and lived again. We are the teachers and the students, the mother and the father. We are tears and smiles, and sometimes we are the cause of them all. We are the fashionable and the nerdy ones. We have come from all different colors and wore them all. We are the joker and the serious one. We are the mischievous and the pious one. We are the old and the young one. We are the rich and the poor one. We are the queen and the one with the headscarf. We are every she, we are her, we are you, I am you, you are me. We are and we have been the mothers and will continue to be indeed the mothers in all shape or form we choose to be today and now and for the future. For too long, we have been told to stay small. Don't do that, don't think big, don't dream big, don't ask for a bigger salary, don't ask all of these things. I say every time I try to be small, and I really did, I never could become as small as they want me to be. Never, never small enough. So I might as well, I decided to be as big as I am. And lucky those who want a hand to the tail of my dress. And we should all be as big as we are, big in our dreams, big in our ambitions, big in our actions, big in our salaries and in our requests and our demands and our, you know, aspirations. Might as well be big because small does not pay off. It has not paid off. Now, every time, every time I actually went about the world and saying, that's what I want to do, I have had two responses. One is, eh, no. You know, when I was 15 and I said, I want to change the world and help all women around the world, my friends go, said, prioritize the husband. When I was 23 and I said, I want to start a Women for Women International, and I was just, I just, you know, escaped from an abusive marriage, had $400 in my pocket. I was a recent immigrant in the United States. My friends told me, 
get a house. The, hus the second husband was already there. It's a good one. But they said, get a house, get a car, all of these things. Every time, every time I went about dreaming and to change the world, I was told to adjust it and to really get a house, a car, a husband, or whatever it is, a dress maybe. But you know what? When I started Women Formula International, it took me only one person. Every journey in my life, it took me only one person to believe in me to make a difference. At 16, when I was, uh, at 15 rather, it was my mother said, honey, you can make a difference. And I was in Iraq at that time. You know, so the woman power exists everywhere in different cultures. Um, when I was 23, my former husband, wonderful guy, said, you can. 25 years later, we helped more than half a million women from all over the world and raised and distributed to them $120 million. If I, an immigrant with $400 in my pocket, actually can do that, so can any woman dream any dream and do anything. The only difference between one person's dream and the other is not the dream itself, it's not the ambition, it's not the desire, it's not even the talent, is perseverance. When I later in life at 42 thought I succeeded and I wanted to start a show for Arab and Muslim women and to change that, all of them said, no, nah, no, 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 go back to your humanitarian work. Well, eventually it did and I got the first interview from Oprah Winfrey and, you know, People Magazine called it the show that's changing women in the Arab world, revolutionizing women, Fast Company called it, etc., etc. It is possible to make whatever they told us, it's impossible, possible. It is possible. So, I have few learnings from these journeys that I told you. Now I'm just celebrated 49, so I have like, you know, some experience, I guess, in life. One, it does take one person to believe in you. And it's always easy to say, be that person who believes in others. I say, be that person who believes in someone else. Yeah, it's, it's always, really, it makes all the difference in my life. One person, that one person's voice helps me believe in myself better. And from there, psh, you launch. Second, we need to understand the world from a woman's perspective. I am, we are done with cornering women and thinking they only care about this and this and this and this. Women have different opinions about politics and economy and health and environment and climate change and everything. And we do need to understand it from women's perspective. Now, here's what I learned from working in wars. Wars are always thought about as a men's issue. And men are, and the women are the victims. Well, over 25 years of work in that, I came to learn that men define war from a frontline decision, discussion fighting, bullets, weapons, all of that. Women define war from a backline decision, which is how to keep life going, how to keep schools going, water running, food coming, all of these things. When it comes to peace, peace becomes only defined from a man's perspective, as in the ending of fighting. And it rarely actually includes women to define peace from a woman's perspective, which is usually about how do we build life. That is, I see war and peace as a microcosm of what we do in our life and every single day. We need to understand the world. Everything you work on, you need to look at it from how women are looking at it. Women are bellwether for the direction of the society. You want to understand a society, a culture, a religion, a group of people, a family, see how, what they are doing and how they are doing vis-a-vis -vis their women. They tell you the rest of the story. Bad thing starts with women. In Rwanda, the horrible genocide that killed one million people started with rapes of women. But so are good things they start with women. In the same country, after the peace, 56% of their parliaments now are women. So always watch with what, what women are saying. Second, and doing beyond the stereotype of what women should feel or think. Second, it is much easier talking the talk, much harder walking the walk. For the longest time, I just talked actually about other women survivors of wars. And it was one woman who I was thinking that I'm helping her told me, if the world can hear my story, so... So maybe, uh, and she, her story was she was raped, her daughters were raped, her son, it's a horrible story, she was pillaged, burned, everything. She said, if I can tell the whole world my story, I would. 
so other women would be spared from what I'm going through and what I have gone through. And I learned that when we speak our story, when we each own our story, it is vulnerable, it is fearful, you take risk, it's sometimes like jumping off the cliff and you don't know if you're gonna land or not. Much easier to encourage other women to speak up, much harder to speak up. But I came over time to learn that I must do everything I am preaching. If I want women to be powerful, then I need to be powerful. If I want women to speak up, I need to speak up. If I want them to be happy, I need to be happy. And I came to believe that I am the change that I need to make in my life before I can make the change in the world possible. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, let us make this world that we are living in a product of our imagination. So we might as well reclaim our imagination imagination and freedom for all of us is possible, not because anybody gives it to us, but because we can do it for ourselves. Thank you.